person next to you. You have to get out of your seat. Just turn to the person next to you and say, it is so glad. I'm so glad. So so glad. glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> Friends, my pastoral hope for you today is that your joy would be full. How many of you feel weary sometimes? How many of you need some encouragement here sometimes? The Lord God says, check this out. The joy of the Lord is my what? Grace. Is my what? How many of you got joy in this afternoon? Let me give you a help here, a hint. If you don't got it, fake it till you make it. Let me, let me tell you something. Sometimes with my little girl, well, she's not little anymore, she's already 17 years old. But I remember when she was little, she'd get mad, she'd get upset at me. I'd tell her, don't you laugh now. I told you, whatever you do, don't you laugh, don't you quirk, don't you smirk a smile. You know what she would start doing? She would start laughing, she would Friends, sometimes that's what we not we gotta do. Sometimes we don't feel like it, we come. The sergeant just done yelled at you. You know, the, the uh, commander just got on you, and you're here, you're mad, you're upset, you got the weight of the world on your soldier, on your shoulders. Right? God says smile. God says rejoice in me. Let my joy fill up in you. Yes. And when you do that, I'm going to touch you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to touch those burdens that you have. If you need that, would you pray with me? Gracious God, we worship you today. We thank you for this day. We thank you that we can come here and worship you, God. May your joy be full in us today. May you touch us, God, with, with holy laughter. May you touch us, God, with your presence, with your joy. God, we pray for that because we need it. We need your strength. We need your encouragement. We need your compassion. We need your love today. We need it right now. This we pray as we worship you, O God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's worship the Lord.
it was for the mothers, I dug into them before church started. I'm sorry. They was good. <laughs>
Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And um, I feel very blessed and fortunate that I could <coughs> share a poem with the mothers on this day. Um, the particular poem I want to share today is called Faith Walk. And the funny thing about women, and the funny thing about mothers is that regardless of what the situation is, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what you're going through, if your kid is aching up, if your man aching up, regardless, you still have to walk with that level of faith that's beyond anything that you have to do. Um, just like Minister Mahoney talked about in, in his first and his second um, segment of today's message, he talked about how your father is supposed to be that example of, you know, how you would relate to God and how you would react to God. And sometimes when our fathers have been here and all you have is your mother, you have to come up with your own way to relate to God. You have to come up with your own thing. But the word is there to suffice when, when the man can do what God is trying to do in your life. And so um, I want to offer this poem today to you. How do I love and attend to God and expect freedom? All of my tangible examples have shown me that when I give them total control, they'll only lead to my demise. I hear the Holy Spirit whispering in my ear, but above Him, I'm only hearing lies. Walking around in an ice age where reality is fallacy and fallacies are reality. But see, the ice is the distortion of our sight. We don't see that God operates like a stoplight. He's not there to be a hindrance, but to give us freedom and safety. Jesus gave us freedom and whispered on the cross. Just trust me. This is not some hocus pocus bet of a lifetime, but it's the deal that your life depends on. Understand what you say? I say I walk out in faith. And that's the only thing that I believe.
Praise God. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Yeah. Still blessed. Praise God. Yeah. The scripture says, I will bless the Lord, oh my soul. All right. And all that is within me. Amen. So as long as I still have breath, the Bible says, let everything that have breath, praise the Lord. let him praise the Lord. Our God is still good. Amen. Amen. No so matter what situation I may be going through, good, bad, or indifferent, praise God, our God is still worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. So I'm still going to give God glory because God really is that good. Amen? Amen. Because it is when I think about my life, praise God, I didn't have to be here, praise God. But by His grace and by His mercy, I'm still here. Amen. But the good stuff, it's such a brother roll, I thought the devil was going to take me out of it. But guess what? After all of that mess the devil put me through, I'm still staying. Amen. After all of that stuff, praise God, we are still here. Amen? Amen. So praise God, stand on your feet with me real quick. We're going to pray. Then we're going to go right into this. Amen? But I, before I pray, Brother Bowen, I, I have to admit, praise God, I'm a little bit torn because back when we used to do church, sometimes when the minister got up, he couldn't preach. The Holy Spirit would say, look, man, just praise me. Do what you got to do. Get that praise knocked out the way, praise God. Keep on praising because what we got to stand, saints, praise is how sometimes we get our breakthrough. Amen. Because we got to do what Chapel says. It's the best, it's the bomb, if you will, when you praise God when you don't want to praise God. Praise God when you ain't feeling like praising God. Why? Because when you do that, you're putting. Oh, see, by the way, I get that song popped up. I love you more than
sometimes we say that out of like this tradition, but this is high. The Spirit of the Lord has been so high in me, I couldn't take my seat. Because it felt like in the inside of me, there's a volcano fixing to erupt, praise God. And if I didn't get it out, I was going to hurt myself. What do you see, like, praise God? Jeremiah said, it's like fire shot up in my bones, amen, sometimes. Sometimes we get this Christian life, the things of God just get so pumped up in us, praise God. It's like, if I don't tell somebody, I'm going to explode on the inside, amen? All right, all right. So praise God, Heavenly Father, God, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, God, to acknowledge you, God, to reverence you, God, to praise you, God, we thank you, God, we will bless you, God, and all that is with me, why, oh God? Because of all the wonderful things, dear God, you have already done in our lives, and we don't stop there, God, because you don't stop there. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our life right now. We thank you, God, for what you will continue to do in our life, dear God, in the future. God, we glorify you, God. We magnify your holy name, oh God. You are worthy, God, and worthy, Lord, to be praised. Dear God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. Dear God, we give you the praise. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Before I begin, I just want to say, praise God, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the house, amen. Because when I look at this time over 31 years ago, that Irene Bahoda gave birth to a baby boy named Joseph Thomas Bahoda Jr. Praise God. That is me, and I was born into the earth, praise God. And since I'm the oldest child, my mother became a mother for the first time, amen. I got a little brother, too, so she can give a mother the second time, amen. That being said, at the end of service today, if you haven't called your mom yet, it might be behooving, praise God, to go ahead and do so, amen? So praise God. But also, before I begin, I also have a testimony of what the Lord has done for me in the choir because I'm singing that song. Last night, praise God, I was in a bad way. If y'all remember, yesterday we had the sandstorm, and uh, I was waiting on the bus, and as we know, sometimes you can be waiting on the bus a little bit. And I was out there a little bit, and I got this really bad rock or this pebble in my eye yesterday. So bad in my, my right eye, I couldn't even see at it. So I had my, my eye closed like the whole time, and when you do that, you know the other eye tries to compensate. So the other eye was totally open the whole time, and that's the sandstorm and everything, my left eye was getting dropped. So it was so bad, last night I had to go to the aid station, praise God, and they had to go flush it out, and I had one nurse holding me down, and she was flat me open as I poured the water and stuff in there. It's all right, y'all. I'm good. Praise God. I'm, just yeah. money. I'm getting there. And then all of a sudden, I was sitting there all that, and I was like, and then eventually, make a long story short, I couldn't get it out. And I was like, Lord, you don't even know the rebuke that I was doing last night. I said, Lord, you got to heal my eyes. Praise God. You know, I basically was like, Lord, I won't be able to see. Because I don't just accept stuff like that. And then, and then the nurses are saying, well, you might have pink eye. I said, no, I don't. I said, I felt the rock go in. I'm not going to receive no pink eye. That's what you think it is. Praise God. I said, no. I said, so when I went home, I was like, praise God. I said, you got to heal my eyes and all that. So I went home. I put some solution in my eyes. Praise God. I had a great night's sleep. I got to sleep in because it's my day off on Sunday. Praise God. So it was good stuff. So I woke up and everything. Got up, took a shower. When I got out of the shower, brother, 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 uh, forget your name. Scott. Brother Beasley, when I got out of the shower, praise God, my eyes were both wide open. I didn't have that milky solution up in my eyes. Both eyes were healed. I was seeing great. Amen. See, that's the kind of stuff God can do for you, praise God, when you stand on the Word of God. When you stand on the Word of God and say, well, yeah, you know, my eyes are bothering me, and yeah, I got this, and yeah, I got that, and then we cuss out the nurses because they're drowning you with the IV solution, and you can do all this stuff, but ain't none of that going to get you where you want to be. Because when it's all said and done, when stuff happens, praise God, when these trials and tribulations come, praise God, I shared this with, with this with the uh, the, uh, the students, praise God, in the Wednesday night Bible study, amen. We talked about this. When we go through stuff, amen, don't tell God what it already is. Because God is an all-knowing God. It ain't like he doesn't know before you just open up your mouth. But when you go to him, praise God, tell God what you desire for it to be. Amen. One time I went to God complaining. I was venting and all that. After I get done venting, after I got it all out, the Lord says, Son, what do you want? Because at the end of all day, one thing I've learned, you know, Bible, Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock, and it shall be given unto you. I realize you can't ask, seek, and knock, and complain at the same time. Amen. So we either have to make up in our minds, we're going to do one thing or the other, amen? 
So God said, son, what do you want? And I realized once he told me, I had to pause for a second because I realized I didn't know what I want. I was just too busy complaining about it. So he's like, what you need to do is when you pray now, speak what you desire for it to be. So when that mountain comes, praise God, you speak what you desire for it to be, praise God, instead of what it already is. So you look at the situation, you analyze the situation, and you speak into existence, praise God, what you desire for it to be, amen, and not what it already is, amen? amen. And we talked about that last week, praise God. Sometimes the Lord will allow us to go into situations, praise God, just so we can change that circumstance or situation. See, God never intended for His children, praise God, to be thermometers. They just gauge the temperature. But He allows us to go in situations so we can be thermostats. See, when you turn up the thermostat, what it does is it changes the, either the AC or the heater, praise God, to the environment which is already there. So when you are a thermostat, it changes the environment. We don't change to the environment, but the environment changes to us. Amen? Now, what does that got to do with what we're talking about? Well, praise God and the spirit of mothers, they were still talking about you call yourself a man. Praise God. How come the women can't see? Now, some of y'all will be thinking, what in the world has that got to do with Mother's Day? Praise God. For the most part, absolutely not. Amen. You know what they have learned? See, a lot of people will probably give you a Mother's Day sermon and all that. And that's all that. That's great, praise God. The one thing I've learned is. If the glory of God really wants to come down and bless His children, we cannot be ruled and, and dominated by dead religious tradition. Y'all with me so far? Amen. Now what is basically that? Dead religious tradition, praise God, is this. When basically we do stuff just for the sake of doing it. Amen? Apparently they, they, they came up with the church bylaws 150 years ago, back in the day, and here we are, 150 years later, praise God, and we're still doing the same old, same old stuff. Amen? And here's the funny thing. When you raise your hand and be like, teacher, excuse me, excuse me, could you please tell me why we do that? And like nobody can tell you why they do it. Amen? They just do it, praise God, just for the sake of doing it. Amen? Well, praise God, I don't know about you, but I want to be a preacher. I want to be a man of God that thinks outside the box. Amen. I don't want to operate just like yesterday's revelation. I want to operate in what the Spirit of the Lord is telling me to do right now. Yes. I don't know about you, but I don't want to just come to church where we just come to church, we have a good time, we do a little teary eyes, snot eyes, get the goosebumps and all that. But when we leave, praise God, there's still no change. Yes. I want a church, oh God, when I come into the house of God, the presence of God hits me at the door. Yes. When I come to church, praise God, I want to know that the glory of God and the Spirit of God is in this place, oh God. And if I have a need today, that need can be met. Amen? Amen? And that is what the body of Christ is about. That is what, praise God, the church is about. Amen? Because the Bible does say iron sharpens iron. That's why we come together, because you might have something, praise God, that I need. I might have something to need, praise God, that you need, but we come together and we strengthen one another. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. So just quickly in a recap, amen, we basically talked about how real men, amen, are men of covenant. They're men of promises. Another way of saying it is this. Real men and women of God do this. And this is kind of one of my side points last week. Y'all gave me a great great reaction to it. So when I get a great reaction, that's God's way of saying, you need to stay there, praise God, you need to stay there. So we're going to go back and recap it. And we said this, and we're going to say it now. Real men and real women of God are men and women of their word. Amen? When we speak something that needs to be, praise God, what it is. Amen? So the Bible says, let your yea mean yea, and your nay nay. What does that mean? Let your yes mean yes, and your no no. So when somebody asks you a question, even if it means you're wrong, and I've got to pump myself out. I would rather tell the truth and make myself look stupid than to save myself and have no integrity. Can I say it again? See, I would rather, if, now I have to do that. You know what? Sometimes the first person asks me a question or somebody asks me a question, it's like, oh man, I know what you did now. Because I know I was wrong, right? Or I know I did something stupid. But I would rather say, and guess what? We talked about this before. What real men do, real men take accountability for their own actions. They don't blame somebody else for the stuff that they did. Amen? Amen? So if we know we're wrong, praise God, we have to hone up to it and say, yeah, first sergeant, yeah, commander, that was me. 
Amen. I can't be blaming my soldiers. I can't be blaming sister so and so. I can't be blaming brother so and so. When it's all said and done, praise God, I'm the one who did that. Amen. Amen. And I take responsibility for my own actions. But guess what? I do that, praise God, and I walk in the integrity that God has given me. Amen. Amen. And we looked at this. Turn to Proverbs six. Y'all with me so far? Cool. All right. Praise God. We looked at this last week. Proverbs 6 and 16 says this. Give me about five seconds or so. These things that the Lord hate, yea, seven an abomination unto him. A proud look, I love this, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. He always thinking the worst of people. Feet that are swift to running into mischief, always bringing strife, always bringing commotion. A false witness that speaketh lies. He that soweth discord among brethren. It's a sad commentary, praise God, to say you're a Christian and we can't trust you as far as we can grow. Amen. amen? So to be a Christian, amen, when the words that come out of our mouth, we should be able to trust that because as a man or a woman integrity, we should have it. Amen. You know what I've learned about the NCO Creed? You know how it says I'm not compromised by moral integrity, no moral courage? You know what I've learned about that? You can't compromise integrity if you don't have it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So one of the reasons I see a lot of people compromising is they don't have it to start off with. Amen. Amen. However, comma, we are children of the Most High God. Amen. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Therefore, we are held accountable to a higher standard. So as, as a Christian, we can't say, well, well everybody else in the MCO course is doing it. Well, everybody else in the company is doing it. Well, everybody else in the world is doing it. So therefore, if they can do it, it's okay. It's okay for me. Not so. What does the Word of God say? Amen? We are exactly, we are the called out of the called out ones. We're called out, praise God. We are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. So at the end of the day, praise God, when people look at me, they should say, you know what? He's a man of character. He or she is a man or woman of integrity. Amen? Let's put this note down. Real men and real women do not put their integrity up for a price. Amen? Real men and real women do not sell their integrity. Amen? Because the Bible says, what does it do, or what does it, what does it gain a person if they gain the whole world, but then lose their own soul? Amen? Devil, I don't care what you flash in front of me. If it ain't God, then it's not for me. Because we all know the devil can open doors too and make it look like it's all out of the back of the church too. Yeah. Remember he went to Jesus and he said, Look, Jesus, bow down and worship me. And all these things, all these kingdoms will be given unto you. Which is really a stupid temptation because the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. And they that dwell therein. So he was tempting Jesus for something Jesus already owned. Amen. But see, that goes back to knowing who you are. See, if you know that. And you know you're a child of God. You know we're a son of God. When the devil messes with you with stuff, there's certain things that's not going to bother you because you know who you are. Listen, devil, you can't tempt me with that because you might not know who I, who I am, but I know who I am. And since I know who I am, I'm not going to go down that road. As a matter of fact, devil, let me educate you on something. The fact that you are even messing with me on that is beneath me. The fact that you're even messing with me on that is belittling me. Excuse me, devil, but please let me educate you on who you are talking to. Come on. Amen. Amen? See, here's the thing. We talked about this many, many months ago about the righteousness of God. Christ has given us the power, praise God, to do that. Amen? Amen. I don't have to be pumped out by sin, temptation, people, places, and things. God can give me authority over that, praise God, so I don't got to keep going down the same road and the same stuff and the same stuff and keep making the same mistakes. No, I can be free today and every day in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Give God a hand praise for that. You with me so far? All right, turn to 1 Samuel 17. Chap it on how far we're going to get. I'm going to try, praise God, to finish this today, but... I've learned from a sister, praise God, who lives in that Bible study, it's not always best to go through stuff real quick. Because we might not get it in time. Amen? Amen. So I've learned if we take our time, and plus we process a lot better, we go over things over and over so we can get this thing. Amen? Amen. Alright. 1 Samuel 17, 32-37. Now, 
Let's look at verse 32. Now this is David going to Saul, fixing to take on Goliath. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy, father, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took lamb of the flock. And when I went out after them, I smote them and delivered them out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servants slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine should be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, thy Lord be with thee. A couple points I want you to point out again. Real men and real women, praise God, are know what they're called to do. They know what their anointing is. Amen? And then they're not afraid to walk out in that calling and anointing. Now if you take that same mindset and go to the next chapter in 1 Samuel 18, remember, praise God, after this, after, we all know the story, praise God, David killed Goliath, and then Saul promoted him to the general of his army, and then David came back from the campaign, and the women said, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. And the Bible said that Saul had jealousy and envy in his heart because of David. David. What's my point? Real men and real women are not threatened by other people's anointing. Amen? Real women. Y'all with me so far? Amen. So praise God. That's why the Bible says rejoice for those who rejoice and mourn for those who mourn. I don't, I don't get wrapped up in the action of God's blessing you. Amen. I'm not trying to compare myself to the Joneses. Because at the end of the day, praise God, i got to be the best beholder I can be. Amen. You see what I'm saying? you got to be the best brother Bleasley you can be. you got to be the best brother Bones you can be. You don't walk in my destiny, nor do I walk in yours, praise God. So whatever God has for you, amen, that is for you, brother Roller. I can't feel threatened because God promotes you and God blesses you. It seems like I'm not getting nothing, so God, what the heck's going on with that? No, praise God, amen. amen. I don't live in your house, praise God. I don't know what your destiny is. I don't know what your calling is. I don't know what your anointing is, but I know what my calling, my anointing is, praise God. So I don't feel threatened. I don't get jealous. I don't get envious. I don't get all this other stuff hoping I have what you have. Because at the end of the day, what you have ain't for me, but what God has for me is for me. Amen? Amen. So we shouldn't rise up in jealousy and envy when all the other people in the body of Christ seem to be getting something, praise God, and it seems like I'm not getting it. Because at the end of the day, praise God, I don't live your life. Amen? And therefore, you guys don't live mine, so praise God. So don't look at me, I'm not looking at you. What we're all trying to do is when we all get to heaven together, we operate in the anointing, the calling, which we're called to do while we're still on the earth. Amen. So we all get there and say, praise God. Didn't the Lord use us to do this and that? Praise God, didn't his ministry go forth? Praise God, didn't his manifest as the kingdom and glory be manifest on the earth through us? Amen? Amen? And guess what? You don't have what I have, I don't have what you have, but guess what? We all need each other together, praise God, so the kingdom of God can go forth. Amen? Because we all have different anointings, we all have different callings, we all have different things in us, praise God. But it all takes each and every single one of us for God to do what he needs to do. Amen? Amen. Alright. So don't, so don't get wrapped around the asshole, but the blessings of other people. Or here's another thing. Don't try to steal what other people have. Now I'm single, praise God. I see this in the single world a lot. Is, you know, we have the boyfriend, the girlfriend, praise God. We don't have one yet. So we start praying that God breaks them up. So I can go ahead and get up in there because I don't have nobody yet. That happens. It happens a lot. Or here's another one. You know that person's married. Can I go, can I go deeper on this? Y'all wait for that? Y'all wait for it. And you know that person's married. But since you're not, since I don't have a spouse, I'm going to go ahead and borrow one. <laughs> Y'all with me so far? And we do this stuff because we're settling for what we don't have. So since we're trying to walk in somebody else's anointing, and since I want that, instead of seeking the Lord for that, I'm going to go and take it from there. And here's the revelation. Then we want to go and say, oh, thank God that he's blessed me. <laughs> so somebody else's stuff, but we think that God is a good God. Oh, yes, he is. He's an all-time God. Oh, yes, he is. And you know you took that. Amen? So now we want to put something on God when God
God have nothing to do with that. Here's the revelation that when we do stuff that's not God, God does not have to bless off on that. So guess what? Don't be surprised after that whole thing went down, you got way more drama than what you started with. Because any time we go out of the will of God, praise God, we let the devil come up in there and run roughshod in our life. Amen? But when we do it God's way, praise God, we get God's results and God's anointing and God's calling, His revelation, God's blessings as well. And the world didn't give this to me and the world can't take it away. So as long as God is hooking me up, as long as God is blessing the devil, I don't care what you try to do because you cannot take what the Lord has reserved for me. Amen? Amen. So I'm not going to feel threatened by what God blesses with other people because God's got my back too. Amen? Amen. All right, y'all with me so far? Yes. All right, y'all getting anything out of this? Yep. All right. Again, we talk about this. Real men and women of God know how to put their egos in check. They realize, look, it's not about us. It's not about me. At the end of the day, I am who I am today by the grace and the mercy of God. Yes. It's not because I'm all that in the bag of chips, but I serve a God who is. Yes. Praise God. I'm not all that, but Jesus is. I'm not perfect, but Jesus is. My righteousness ain't nothing, but Jesus is all that in a bag of chips, amen? So guess what? As long as God is all that, praise God, I'm going to let God be God, and I'm going to let me be me. And I'm not going to choose in Revelation. I'm not going to try to do God's job. See, there's some jobs, praise God, only God can do. And we're going to talk about this later on. See, we're going to realize that true victory, this is going to sound really, really weird to us particularly for us to be in the military. But in God, it works like this. See, in the military, they teach you when you go to battle, don't ever surrender. At least not of my own free will. You know the whole God of conduct, that whole thing? Well, guess what? In God, it's totally the opposite. True victory only comes in surrender. Amen. Let me explain to you how this goes down. Because in God, praise God, there's certain things that we may have to take care of on our own. But there's going to come a time when we may go through something that only God himself can fix. Well, guess what? If I don't surrender that thing to God, praise God, I don't, I'm not giving God permission to come in there and deal with that situation. So i got to surrender it to him so God can come in there so his power and his might and his victory can come out of the situation. Amen? Amen? But guess what? If I don't give it to him, then I'm only relying on my own resources and my own strength to try to make it happen. Well, guess what? I don't know about you, Brother Basie, but my own strength, my own emotion, my own energy, my own resources, eventually, that's going to wear out. So when your stuff wears out, and you've done all that you can, and if you don't still give it to God, where do you go from there? Because you know you can't, can't do it anymore by your own, but we're not giving it to God, so how do we get our victory then? So real victory, praise God, only comes in surrender. Amen? And real men and real women, praise God, we swallow our pride. There's another one, praise God. Real men, men and women, go ahead and write this down, know how to put pride in check. Amen? They said, God, they said, God, it's for you I live and for you I die, and they're not ruled and reigned by pride. Amen? Now, can I give you an example of how this works? Praise God, a lot of times, this is like when I was in Iraq before the Lord allowed me to pastor the gospel service. And me, I, and I like being complimented. I'm just being real with you, right? So when people come up to me and they pat me in the back and like, you know, this boat, this boat, that, was, that was an awesome word, sir. That was just, praise God, that was awesome. Now, on the outside, I'm like, well, praise God. God is good. <laughs> Amen? Now, that's what they teach us in ministers and training classes. If you ever go to ministers and training classes, God is good. Praise God. He's an all-time God. He's got a great work. But on the inside, I'm like, I know that's right. <laughs> that's what's up right there. You know what my name is? Who brings that puppy, right? You know what I'm saying? Because on the inside, your emotions rise up. So when people keep coming to you and come coming to you and coming to you, and they keep giving that positive stuff, if you don't put pride in check, you're like, I know that's right. I'm a man. And you start thinking that you're the one doing that, and not the anointing that is in your life. And you start thinking that you're the anointing instead of God being the anointing. And you start thinking that you're all that in the bag of chips instead of the one who blessed you to have it like that. Amen? 
So actually, you know, even though they teach us in that ministry training, I thank God they do. Because it allows my, my soul, my emotions to stay balanced. Yeah, so I don't get the big head, praise God. So I don't get stupid and just get out there thinking I'm all that. Amen? Right. So praise God, go with me. All right. Now, let's go to verse 30, uh, where do we want to go? 38. Actually, 43. I think about 43. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with stabs? So now you have this, this, this worldly, unsaved, circumcised, uncircumcised Philistine talking trash to the man of God. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. So he's answering that trash with his own spiritual God given, God fearing man of God talk. He's responded to that mess with the word of God. Y'all got y'all with me on that? Yeah. So he's not just, oh, oh, this, oh what, this unsaved person is talking trash to me. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm so unworthy. I'm so this, I'm so that. No, let me help you, Phil Side. You're going to die. You're going to die because God has already told me he's going to die. Why is that? Remember we talked about this last week. The chapter before this, 1 Samuel 16, David was anointed to be king already. Y'all remember that? Guess what? David can't be king if he's dead. So before he even went out to Goliath, he already knew Goliath was going to die. Because David can't lose that battle, because if he loses that battle, he can't be king. He was anointed by God to be king. That encourages me. If I'm anointed by God to do something, I don't care what the world tries to tell me. I don't care what it looks like, praise God. If I know who I am, and I know what I'm called to do, and I know what I'm anointed to do, it doesn't matter what you throw at me, you got to lose. Amen? Yes. Write this down. There's another point. Real men and real women, praise God, are not moved by what they see. Amen? There's another thing. Don't let what you see change what you say. Amen? What does the Word of God say regarding your situation? What does the Word of God say regarding that? Amen? Don't be moved, praise God, by what you see. Amen? Now, how does that apply to us today in the 1400 Gospel service in Cobb Spiker, Iraq? Well, I'm so glad you asked, praise God. If you're in the military, praise God, you might have heard this thing called a three months extension. You're with me so far. And what we say, don't let what you see change what you say. However, when that word came out that we really, 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 really were getting extended, and then six months of rumors we were talking about were actually legit now, okay? Some of this stuff, but it's like, I, I thank God I was on leave when that, when that leave came out. I, I know some of the stuff I heard from my soldiers, praise God, and that was just some ugly, ugly stuff up in there. Now, here's the thing. I understand that coming out from an unsafe person. You know, with me so far. I understand it, praise God, because if you don't have God, praise God, you're only limited to what you can naturally see and what you can naturally sense. So guess what? You're going to vent and come out against the things, praise God, that you only know about. Well, since you are unsaved, you don't know about spiritual things. Yes. But guess what, praise God? Anything God allows or permits, He's got purpose wrapped up in it. Yeah. So even if I don't like it, praise God, there's some things in me, praise God, that i got to do. That I can only do, praise God, if I stay here three more months. Amen. Now, some of y'all don't like that. Well, I know that might be true, other part, but I don't care. I want to go home. Praise God, I do. But, praise God, if I don't stay here, whatever God has got in me, whatever anointing that is on my life, whatever calling that God has placed me to do, I only got five more months to do it, praise God. Amen. So I look at this whole thing. I don't look, man, I can't believe I'm three more months. No, I only got five more months to finish the job. I only got five more months to finish what God has put in me to give what I need to give and do what I got to do before I check out of here. Amen? Amen. Here's another thing. When I get on that plane, Pastor, I'm going to be like Paul that says, you know, I ran my race. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. My point is, when I get on that plane, I want no regrets. Amen. If I had any unforgiveness, praise God, I forgave. If I said something to somebody did something wrong, I repent. When I get on that plane, if I offend anybody, I make it right. When I get in that plane, praise God, when I go back to Fort Bragg, Hawaii, wherever I go to, praise God, I can go on that plane with a clear conscience, amen? amen. 
when I, when I, you know, when I get on that plane, praise God, and that those wheels hit the ground, everybody's like, hey, and they turn on the plane. I'm turning the plane because I did what God told me to do. Amen. When I leave this puppy, praise God, I leave this puppy, and I say, thank you, Lord, that I'm gone. Thank you, God, that I'm bound to, but thank you, God, for giving me the opportunity and the privilege and opportunity to minister your word while I was still there. Amen. Amen. And I thank you, God, for blessing me, praise God, to bless me to be a blessing to others while I was there. Amen. 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 Because there's another thing we're going to learn. She ain't going to have time to get to that. Pastor, can you eat me next Sunday? <laughs> Praise God. Part four next Sunday. Okay? Because we're going to learn this next Sunday, Praise God. Real men, real women as well, are people of influence. Amen? Amen? Amen. And this is what I learned about leadership. We're going to talk about leadership next Sunday. Oh, I still want to do this today, though. Man, this is good stuff. But anyway, I've learned this. If you call yourself a leader and you have nobody following you, you're just an individual taking a walk. <laughs> Amen? And we got a whole lot of people, praise God, that call themselves leaders and they're just individuals taking a walk. See, because a lot of times, can I get military on? I'll see how this goes in the spirit. My father of faith gave me this when I was an R&R. &R. He said, son... What makes the soldiers obey you in your section? And basically, we got around to the UCMJ. <laughs> but he's like, check this, son. What happens when you're a civilian pastor and you don't have the UCMJ backing you up? What are you going to do when you're a civilian and there is no more attention and parade rest? What are you going to do when there is no such thing as Eddie's your mouth? What are you going to do when all those things no longer apply, man of God? When you're in charge of a civilian church and you have all these civilians now in your church, where is your level of influence that helps them, makes them get to where they need to be in God when this no longer exists? When these ACUs are off, and your rank no longer means anything, are we man and woman of God enough to help get people where they still need to be in God? Another way of saying it, I don't want my soldiers to do what I want them to do because of the UCMJ. I want my soldiers to follow me because I want them to, not because they have to. You see the difference? That doesn't mean my soldiers got to like me. But if I'm living godly and having character and integrity and respect and respect them, praise God, they might not like me, but they will respect me. Because I have God-given character, I have God-given integrity, and this so goes back to next, next week. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say this. I can't. Does it take too long to Anyway, praise God. But I'll just say this. If we have our people around us, can you give me 10 more minutes? Yeah. Give me 10 more minutes. No, no, no. Alright. Have you all heard that saying in the military, check down but not up? Oh. Amen. <laughs> Have you ever heard that saying, soldier, stay in your lane? Yeah. You ever heard that? I'm going to rock your world with somebody. Now, I will say this the last three weeks. I know I've been stepping on some of y'all toes, praise God. So just go ahead and just put it in the bag of all the stuff I already stepped on because I'm probably going to go there again too. All right, let me help you with this. That saying of check down, not up, is not biblical. Amen. I didn't get too many amens on that. Amen. It, thank you. <laughs> that is not Bible. Because this is what I've seen a lot of leaders do. They take that and they use that to keep doing the wrong thing. And then when a subordinate checks them, they hide behind their rank. Oh, yeah. And they hide behind that philosophy Woo. to keep doing what they're doing. I know I just stepped on something right there. Tell me, Murray, how you doing? Praise God. You doing all right? Now, we're talking about real men of God and real women of God. What do Christians do? There's another thing. If God can never go back to the Old Testament, if God can use a donkey to speak to a man, I know he can use a private. Yes. Which means if God can use a donkey to check me, then I also know he can use a private to check me. Yes. Now, here's another thing. What do real men and women of God do? They put
put the pride in ego in check. So when a person checks me, I don't say, well, private, you need to stay in your lane. Amen? Because privates ain't stupid. They can recognize hypocritical action when they see it. They can see when you're jacked up and they can see it. They know what wrong looks like and what right looks like when they see it. But guess what? We want to rise up in pride and say, soldier, stay in your lane. We want to say, soldier, you are not in my lane. Check down, but not up. Let me tell you what the Bible does say about that. Go to Luke 6. Praise God. I might be a private next week. <laughs> but it'd be okay. No, it ain't. Give me five more minutes. I'm going to deal with that too. Because if you stop there, it almost makes it sound like you have the right to cut your boss out. <laughs>
why, praise God, you've got to ask yourself, what type of person is this coming from, amen? Because unsaved people don't live according to the Word of God. However, as a Christian, we are supposed to. Amen? So therefore, I check myself before I go out and do that. Amen? Now, go to Romans 13. We're closing with this. I still need to get there. All right. Romans 13. You all with me? Here we go. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained by God. You mean to tell me that trifling boss that's always messing with me is ordained by God? Yes. What does that mean? Maybe God put him in there to get some stuff out of you that you really don't want to get rid of. Or, this is, this is, God does this for me. God will use that person to expose the mess in me that I need to correct. Because here's the thing, you know, the Jesus in you, or Jesus in me, was the Jesus in you. That's easy when everybody's loving and dubbing on each other. Let's give it all about praise God, ain't God good. But when you're cussing up and down, where's the Jesus in you now? Amen? Amen. It's easy to love people when they're loving you back, ladies and gentlemen. It's so easy. But guess what? When you don't have that, I don't know about you, but that's when those emotions when you get up, and that pride rises up. You know, I don't got to take this. You know, I've been in the army almost 12 years. I'm an Isaac. I got to take this mess. My soul says that. Inside me says that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But my mouth says, huh? <laughs> and you move out. Or if I do have a discrepancy, I don't go back and forth in the whole company where everybody can see it. I have enough courtesy to go to that person and say, hey, how are you? And I pull them to the side, praise God. And I don't cause mess and strife and division, praise God, amongst the company. They got quiet as get on that. Amen. Amen. That's how real men do. You better believe it. Real women do it too. Praise God. See, it's easy to respond to the anger. Anybody can do that. We talked about this two weeks ago. Real men, real women, praise God, it's, it's even more courageous. It's even more bold. It's even more man or womanly, praise God, to shut your mouth when you know you want to say something. It got quiet again. Anybody can vent and speak out, praise God. Anybody can do that. But can we do the right thing, praise God, when we don't want to? That's the sign of Christian maturity. And that's the level that God wants us to be in in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, go back to the leader thing real quick. Remember when Jesus was standing before Pontius Pilate? And Pontius Pilate said, check, this is Pontius Pilate talking to God. Talking to Jesus, right? He said, Jesus, don't you know that I have the, basically the power to put punishment on you or the power to set you free? And I love Jesus' response. He says, Sir, you've got no power at all unless my Father in heaven gives it to you. Now, those of you who think you're just all that in a bag of chips because you have to be wearing this right here, let me help you. Let me help you all. We are only wearing this. We only have this because our God in heaven allowed us to be here. We need to keep that in mind, because if emotion does come from the Lord, praise God. We need to keep that in mind, praise God, when we're going around our shops thinking that we're now the new God in the section. Amen? There's only one God, praise God, and it's not me. Amen? So when we go out there and we think we're the greatest things in sliced bread, there's only one Jesus, and I'm not him. Praise God? So guess what? I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to keep that balance, praise God, when I talk to my soldiers. Amen? Amen. Praise God we're standing. Took anything on that? Now, with all that being said, praise God. I would be remiss, though, if I did not give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. The choir sang earlier about, you know, I want you to say the same words. That's all you got to do right now if your life is not saved. If you know you're in a position that you're, you're not right with God, with every head bowed and every eye is closed, you can 
get right with God today. Today is the day of your salvation. I can honestly say the Lord saved me back in November 7th, 1996. Now, what was the Lord ever since? That was the greatest decision that I have ever made. Because the Lord saved me, changed me, cleaned me up, made me the man I am today, but I thank God where I am today is not where I'm going to end up. Because where I'm going in God is so much better than what He has for me right now. God's got a plan. He's got a purpose. He's got a destiny just for you. And he wants you to walk in that. God loves you. And He wants only but the best for you. If you are not saved this afternoon, would you come? If you are in a backslidden condition, you gave your life to the Lord, but you're in a backslidden state, and you've been away from the things of God for a long time, and because of that, you're letting the devil run up your life, and you say, Brother, enough's enough. I realize I need to get true victory. And surrendering is to God. You're saying, brother, I want victory in my life. I'm tired of doing this thing over and over and over. And I just can't seem to get ahead. Brother, I want to get ahead in the Lord. If that's you, would you come? Those two calls do not apply to you. You're already saved. I ask you to touch the, the hand of your sister brother next to you. Praise God. As we touch and agree. Pastors, you come. As I pray as pastor ministers and people at the altar, we're going to pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We praise you, God. We're going to bless your holy name because we realize, oh God, you've done great and mighty things in our lives. But we also thank you, God, we're going to apply these messages. We're going to apply these teachings, God, to help us get to God to where we need to be in you. We realize, you God, we may have some shortcomings. We may have some faults. We may have some things in us, oh God, right now that we're not where we need to be. But God, we declare right now that we are not going to stay in them faults. We are not going to stay in the strongholds. We're not going to stay in those things that hold us back, but we're going to stay in the things that propel us, oh God, and elevate us, oh God, to the things of you. We pray right now, God, as we leave your God shortly, that we surround ourselves with people, oh God, to help speak life and not death into our lives. May we get with people, oh God, that's going to encourage us and help us, God, to get to where we need to be. We pray, oh God, right now, Lord, that your guardian angels Surround us, protect us, keep us. Order our steps, O oh God, in your word. That way we can be the men and women of God you desire for us to be, to have. We thank you, God, that we are a blessing to be a blessing to others. We thank you, God, wherever there's a vision, there's godly provision. We thank you, God, even when we don't know what it looks like, if we've got to know that you already know. We didn't understand the three month extension. But we realized, you God, there's purpose wrapped up in it. We don't know why, maybe, God, you sent us here. But God, there's purpose wrapped up in it. And God, we declare by faith that we are going to be men and women of God. Men and women of God that are about that purpose. You God, I pray to your God right now. If there's somebody in here in the sound of my voice that is running from your purpose. Running from your plan. In the name of Jesus, dear God, turn that heart around right now. My friend, if that's you, if you continue to run away from the things of God, you're never going to have fulfillment. You're never going to have peace. Because God said, take upon me my burden, which is light. Jesus says, I love you. This is not a grievous thing. God says, if you run to me, not only will I give you the peace and the joy and the fulfillment, but I will give you what you need to accomplish your mission. It would be an unloving father to call you to do something and not give you what you need to accomplish it. God is saying, I'm not going to do you like that. I'm going to give you what you need to 
to accomplish the assignment that I have for you to walk in on the earth. I'm a loving God. I'm a caring God. And I care for you. Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, right now that you'll have your way in this place. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
that mother that is upstanding, that can be that example for your child so they grow up and they're not those children that are running around the store that you wish you could be their mom and take the bathroom. Um, you, you pray that over yourself, you pray that for your mother, any mother, your grandmother, all mothers, they're wonderful people, mothers are. And it's, it's not easy being a mom, it's not easy being a dad. So for, for people that have that job, that God bless them with children, you know, lift them up in prayers, especially if they're over here. It's very difficult to be away from your child. I'm sure you all know. Um, our weekly scripture readings come from Experiencing God Day by Day. We now have two Bible studies, one on Monday at 2000 at Sharks Cove, which is in LSA 5, and they're studying Growing in Christ 101. And on Wednesdays, we have at 1900 right here, we have Mastering Your Mind. I actually have some of uh, the handouts if you would like one after service, please stop by and see me. Um, Grace Team and Choir Rehearsal is Saturday at 1830, Sunday at 1300. And ADOL Practice is Fridays at 2000. Um, if you would like to be baptized, please see Mr. Mahoner um, or Chapter Santillo after the service. Friends, I have to just have a quick announcement. God is doing some really awesome things. You know, on the other side of the, uh, the I was going to say airport, the airfield. Keep me right, keep me straight. On the other side of the uh, airfield, we have a place called Sharks Cove. It's another facility where we do ministry and services. We have an opportunity to do a 2,100 gospel service over there on the other side because we have some soldiers that just can't make it over here because of uh, conflicting uh, work schedules, missions, and that kind of thing. Now, I don't want to take away from the ministry of this service, but if you just happen to live over in that area or happen to be in that area and would like to support that ministry, what I'd like to do is quickly, right after the service, just 10 minutes is all we need, is a quick meeting for those who would be interested in finding out more about that service and others who might be interested in helping in the ministry, doing things like music and all those other things. So right after the service, right as soon as we dismiss, right up here for about 10 minutes. Thank you.
He didn't carry around a medicine kit. He didn't even own a medicine cabinet. But he healed him. Jesus never won a military battle. He never had a soldier. But he was feared by all the kings in the world. And we wonder why we serve him. Think about it. Would you pray with me? Dear Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us here to this service. Bless us and keep us. Keep us all our hearts and minds. Father, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, let us think of these things and bring us back again to worship in your name we pray next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.